what are real world assets and how do they work. Welcome to another DeFi chain video. My name is Kyuki and as always, I try to provide you with data and insights so that you can make smart decisions for yourself. Today, I want to talk about real world assets and how we implemented them on DeFi chain. Because nowadays, a lot of people talk about real world assets. Um, it's on the, on the hype right now. Um, but on DeFi chain, we already have them for over one and a half years, I think. Um, and I thought, let's make a video to get an overview and an overview of the concept on how they are done on DeFi chain, how they are implemented on DeFi chain. Um, so it's just an overview video. Um, I won't go into all the details um, or all the numbers and everything, um, but I thought it's good to have one overview of how this thing works and how things play together. Um, so without further ado, let's go right in and first talk about what is a real world asset. In the end, I'm, I'm talking about real world assets on blockchain. Um, so not real world assets in the real world. Um, but what we think, talk about is if you have an asset, something in the real world, which is not on the blockchain, and you want to represent that on the blockchain. Um, there are basically two ways of doing that. Um, one is to have the token and have a central entity which takes this real world asset. For example, if you say you want to bring gold onto the blockchain, you can have one central entity that buys gold and tokenizes the gold. So that if you buy the token on the blockchain, you basically own the real world gold on the other side. Um, that's not really decentralized, right? It's a centralized central entity that takes that, has the custody for that, and then you can have ownership of this via the token. Um, so then this token that represents that reflects the price because you can, best case, you can always claim it. So we deem the real gold for it and therefore do the arbitrage. Um, but yeah, it's not decentralized. It's a lot of um, attack vectors on that um, if you go regarding regulations and everything. And the other way is that we say we want a decentralized token. So we want to create a token that reflects the price of the asset without a real connection to the asset. Um, and that's that's what I'm talking about today. Um, that we say, okay, a real world asset on a blockchain that reflects the price, but is really decentralized, 100% blockchain um, without a central entity behind it. Um, so now let's look how this is done on DeFi chain. Um, the first block, the first thing that's important here or that's needed for this are the votes. Um, because first thing to create that or get something on the blockchain is you need to create the token there somewhere. So you need to mint the token. And on the chain, this is done via votes. Um, back, if you have a vote, you basically you put in collateral into the vault. Um, and collateral tokens are crypto tokens with one exception the DUSD, not going into the details, everything, as I said, just a concept, but you have collateral on there. So you can put in Bitcoin, Ethereum, DFI, USDT, and whatever, um, put in the collateral. And if you put in collateral, you can take out a loan in your real world asset, um, which is actually creating that real world asset. Um, we call it taking a loan. Um, and you just, the only thing that you have to stick to is if you put in, for example, $150 a worth of the collateral, you can take out a maximum of $100 worth of the real world asset um, with the 150% collateral ratio. Um, as I said, there are more details to that. There are different loan schemes. You can create different types of uh, bolts, um, 150, 175, 200% and so on. Um, you pay interest on the loan when you take when you take out the loan you pay interest on that on that loan and so on but just to keep keep it simple just a concept you put in collateral um, a worth also crypto worth some some values and you can take out the, the loan and therefore create the asset um, and this is already the decentralized way of doing it this shows already that you don't need a central entity you don't need someone to be allowed to do that it's part of the consensus. So anyone on the chain, anyone on the blockchain can put in the collateral, take out the loan and therefore create more of this loan token, more of this real world asset. And now the 
the question is, um, or the, the, the important thing is, how does the chain, since it's a decentralized solution, it's directly in a consensus, the chain needs to know what is the worth of Bitcoin, DeFi, Ethereum, SPY, DLT, whatever. So there needs to be some way of telling the chain itself, the consensus itself, what's the worth here. And that's done via oracles, um, where we say, okay, um, there is a price feed in the real world, and there is a network of oracle providers. Um, they are trusted oracle providers, um, but there is also mechanisms that if one oracle provider reports wrong feeds or something, um, there are uh, security mechanisms to then um, hold the oracles and stuff like that. So there is more complexity to it, but in the end, um, it's oracles that send the, the real world price onto the blockchain. So there's the dual transaction to tell the chain, the consensus, this is the price of SPY, for example, SPY in USD. Um, as you see, there's a lot of um, um, real world assets, a lot of loan tokens, um, but I will, for the, for the whole examples, I will now stick to SPY. Um, but every, everything that I say here, down here uh, now, is for all the loan tokens um, where we have a stable price fit. Um, but it's always, for example, SPY in USD, so you have the Oracle SPY in US dollar, um, you put that oracle in, and this oracle defines the value in the vote. So through this oracle, it's also the oracles for Bitcoin and stuff like that. So every token that's somehow connected to a vote that can be used as a collateral or can be used as a loan token, only is possible to be used there if there is a stable price feed for that, and if there are oracles providing that price feed to the chain. Um, so that's the, um, the requirement here. And as soon as you have that, now, the consensus knows um, that what your collateral is worth in dollars and the consensus knows what your loans are worth in dollars and therefore can calculate if you are above or below your minimum collateral ratio and if you're below um, you get liquidated the world to get liquidated and the whole thing is stabilized um, so that's how the world knows that um, now the question is um, what can you do with that um, and how how do you use them and therefore, you have the DEX. Um, we have the native DEX on the DeFi chain, which is also part of the consensus. Um, and there we have the pools where you have, for example, SPY DUSD. So for every loan token here, except the DUSD, for every loan token, you have a pool, the real world asset with the DUSD. And you can take that, people can buy the real world asset on the DEX or they can create it via the vote depending on what use case they have, what they want to do, right? Um, and the different question or the, the difficult question basically now is how to make sure that this price, because this pool itself um, is a separate market. It's completely, completely independent of the price of the real world asset. Um, it's just a pool where um, supply and demand, people buy it, sell it, um, whatever. Now, how do we ensure that this price sticks or is close to the overall price, so the real world price? Um, on the one hand, um, there is a hard cap to the premium with the collateral ratio, because as soon as you have, for example, now SPY in more than 50% premium, you could put in $150 worth of collateral, take out a loan in, S in dollar worth, a loan in SPY that's worth $100, because $150 in, $100 out. Now you can sell the DSPY for more than $150 because it's in a more than 50% premium. So you get out more than $150 and, and you put in, you had put in $150 collateral, you got out more than $150, you made a profit and you can do that in a loop and therefore sell SPY until the premium is below 50%. Um, but 50% is a bit pretty big range, right? Um, so that's that's a hard cap for the premium, but we don't want to stay at that hard cap. Um, in the beginning, when the whole thing was yeah implemented and activated, we had that premium um, because a lot of people wanted to have uh, buy SPY and all the, uh, the real world assets there. Um, so everything got up to the premium. 
So we had to find a solution for that. And the solution that the chain or the, the community came up with are the future swaps. Um, because on a DEX, if you swap something on a DEX, um, it actually, the tokens just change their ownership. There is no token created or removed based on the swap. So um, even if you do, um, if you do, if you have a premium and someone sells the token, it's still the same amount is there. With the 50% premium cap, there you create tokens because you do the loop. So you get in, you create more tokens and sell it. That's why it's getting the premium down. But below that, we need some way of um, yeah, balancing the demand and supply. So if there is a premium, it means there's more demand than supply. And if there's a discount, it means there's more supply than demand. And the future swap now does that because it allows to convert real world assets once a week and convert really in terms of you can put in SPY and get out the USD and the swap basically burns the, DSP, the SPY and creates the USD or the other way around. If you put in the USD and get out SPY, it burns the USD and creates the SPY. It does that at a 5% range and only once per week. Why once per week? Because um, on the one hand, we don't want to stick it hard to the to the oracle price directly instant because on the one hand DeFi chain the dex is open 24 7 oracles only trade during the working hours not on the weekend and everything um, so you would have unintended effects there if you do it instant on the other hand um, we don't want to have those assets be considered securities and with a hard cap with a, or with a hard binding to the price um, it's far li more likely that they are considered con securities. If it's just a loose binding, um, it's far easier and better in the decentralized world. Um, and that's why it's once per week and only in the plus minus 5% range. Um, and how does it work? Basically, you can put in the SPY and you can swap or convert SPY to DUSD at 95% of the overcre price and you convert it in another way, um, other direction at 105% of the overcre price. So just as a small example, um, if SPY would be in a 10% uh, discount right now, um, you can buy it at 10% discount on DEX. So you put in DSD, get the SPY out, and then you sell it on the swap. So you convert it here at a 5% discount. So the 5% difference, is your profit and you do that for as much DSD as you have, buy up the uh, pool, SPY goes up in the pool, discount reduced um, and people do that until it's at five at the five percent discount in within the five percent range. Other way around, if it's at a 10 percent premium, you put in collateral, create the SPY, sell it on the DEX, take the DSD that you get, um, so the 10 percent uh, premium DSD, um, and swap uh, or convert the DSD back to the SPY at a 5% premium. So again, 5% difference for you. You get the SPY, pay back your loan, get the collateral out and have your 5%. So there is this arbitrage that allows, um, or that leads to the tax prices going back into the 5 plus minus 5% range once a week. And we see now for over a year, how this works and it keeps the prices pretty stable within this plus minus five percent range we already it took a few weeks in the beginning until everything um yeah worked worked out and everything um was yeah stable but now um we already see for a long time traders already anticipating that the future swap will happen if prices go outside of the plus minus five percent range it gets traded back in because they already anticipate that. Um, so um, it's a pretty stable solution. Um, I did a video about how it works and more details about that. Um, so watch that if you are interested in more details on that. Um, also, this whole thing, um, this future swap and everything works for all real world assets except for the DUSD. Um, so everything where we have a price against the DUSD, um, there the future swap works because you can convert loan tokens against loan tokens. For the DUSD, we can't do something like that because that would be the death spiral like um, Luna. 
that we had there, Terra Luna, um, if you do that against DFI or something. So there, for the DSD, it's a bit more complex and we have different mechanisms there. Um, but again, there's a different video about that um, where I'll go a bit into the details on the uh, mechanisms that will keep the DSD stable at $1 um, about that. So um, with that, I hope that cleared a bit that up. Um, in the end, I just want to show you a bit to get this whole thing into perspective or maybe just have the overview um, what we have on the DeFi chain on the native side of the DeFi chain right now. Um, and that's basically that's our DEX. And on the DEX we have on the one side the, the crypto world um, where we have the wrapped tokens, the crypto tokens which are wrapped by, by Bake. Um, and there are the real cryptos on the on the backing address, uh, real Bitcoin, Ethereum and so on. And we have the wrapped token on DeFi chain and they're all, each arrow is a pool on the DEX where you can trade it. And they're all paired with DeFi. And then we have the real world asset part um, where we have all the loan tokens. Um, as I said, there are heaps of them right now already. And we have SPY, Tesla, QQQ and board, um, the stock tokens. And they are all paired with the DUSD. Those pools are kept in the range with the future swap. And then we have here the um, gateway pools, as I call them, where we have the DUSD to the crypto world, um, which are have a bit of a different dynamic. But as you see, you can now basically, if you find anything, just take you can take a path in this um, graph, and that's the composite swaps that you can do and move from crypto to real world assets. Um, and around. And that's the native side of DeFi Chain. And I understand um, if you don't know DeFi Chain, um, it's a fork of, um, also, it's a code fork of Bitcoin. So it's based on the UTXO model um, and had a native DeFi, um, which is all dead. And now we also have an EVM on top of that, where you can also use this native real world assets directly on the EVM side without need to know anything about that. Um, but again, I don't want to go too deep into the details here. Um, I did a video about what I think is the value of DeFi chain, um, where I did more um, yeah, in depth about this um, EVM layer and stuff. Look, watch that video if you are interested into using real world assets on an EVM with the native backing um, from the future swap and everything. With that, um, I hope that helped give an overview on our real world asset on DeFi chain. Um, if you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And with that, see you in the next video.